As Pastor Randy shared last week, unshakable is the journey theme this month. And our scripture passage today tells the story of a woman who was unshakable. She was bold, courageous, and intelligent beyond what was expected of her given her position in her patriarchal community and oppressive society. So please pray with me as we prepare to receive God's word today. God of grace, mercy, and power, open our eyes, our ears, hearts, and spirits that we might receive hear and respond to you today. In Christ's name and the power of spirit, we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning comes from the sixth chapter, sixth and seventh chapters of the book of Esther. Listen here and receive God's word. Now, while they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived and hurried Haman off to the banquet that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went in to feast with Esther. And on the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition and the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ashurus said to Queen Esther, who is he and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? And Esther said, a foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified be before the king and the queen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the people of God, we claim the title of and profess to be unshakable. But we know that it is really God's faithfulness that makes it so. Because when and if we try to live our lives without God, we are lost and without hope. This year has proven to be one that has tested our unshakability. I know that's a word you've never heard before, but it's <laughs> we've been shaken to our very core beyond measure. As of yesterday, over 200,000 people have died from COVID-19 in the United States alone. Unemployment, financial food and housing insecurities are realities for many people who never dreamed that they would be in that situation. We have lost political and civil rights icons, experienced a number of hurricanes, wildfires have spread across several Pacific states. The tapes of police killing black men just keep showing up and now we have lost the notorious RBG. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who despite her small physical stature, was a giant in life and the courtroom. She stood unapologetically and boldly for equal rights for women, the disenfranchised and the marginalized. She was a woman who defied and overcame society's attempts to keep her in her place as a woman, mother, and person of Jewish descent. RBG was expected to keep her head down, stay at home, raise her children, and be a good wife. Ah, but God had other plans and prepared her to take on the restrictions that had been imposed on her and others. And with grace, conviction, and authority, she has declared that women belong in all places where decisions being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. The notorious RBG wanted, all she wanted was a seat at the table. Such was the case for a woman whose very name meant hidden or secret. And indeed, Esther lived a secret and a sequestered life. As a member of the Jewish diaspora in Persia, Esther, an orphan raised by her uncle, was marginalized and expected to remain on the fringes of society, stay in her place and be silent. Yet God had other plans for Esther as well. The book bearing her name is much like the woman, an enigma, as God's name is never spoken or verbalized. 
but it is evident that God was not in hiding or silent. God was leading, guiding, protecting, and a very present help in a time of trouble to the chosen people. Many of the social inequities and ills of today can be found in the book of Esther. Excessive and conspicuous consumption, misogyny, xenophobia, racism, classism, sexism, murderous plots by people in places of authority, injustice, exclusion, and marginalization. The book of Esther could have very well served as the script for a modern day reality television series. The book opens with the king of Persia, Ahasuerus, hosting an extravagant party where his extreme wealth, opulence, and gluttony were on display. On the seventh day of the celebration, the king summons his queen, Vashti, to come so he can display and exploit her beauty and for her to perform for the men in attendance. Vashti was a woman of moral character and with a mind of her own. And so she refused to be paraded before the drunken contingent of men as if she were another, another of one of the king's possessions under his authority and control. The king, angry that Vashti would dare to refuse his command, had her removed from his presence, stripped of her title and banished from the kingdom. Now, King Asharis ruled from Asia to Ethiopia, and he was a man of great authority and wealth. However, he was also easily influenced, could be indecisive and without question lacked moral character. Not showing his wife and queen the respect she deserved, and when she dared to cross him, he crossed her out and searched for her replacement a young, among the young women in the kingdom. After a period of preparation, Esther found favor with the king and was chosen as the new queen for such a time as this. Esther, even as the queen, was expected to follow royal protocol. She could not approach the king without being summoned. Again, as a woman, Esther was to know her place and to stay in it. Indigenous and native people, people of African descent, Jewish people, women, anyone who was not a male of European descent have all been told since the founding of these United States of America, stay in your place, follow the rules of engagement and don't cross the ruling class. And any refusal to do so could result in people losing their lives or at a minimum being labeled as difficult, not easy to get along with, troublemaker, a problem. But I contend that nothing has ever been accomplished by a person who didn't know that their place was to press against the established norms, to dream bigger dreams, to try untested theories, to stand up for what is right and just. Just ask Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, the Reverend Dr. Katie Cannon, and the notorious RBG. Just ask. George Washington Carver, John Lewis, Barack Obama, the Reverend Dr. MLK, and all the others who decided that their place was to come out of the shadows and claim their seat at the table. Now, encouraged by the uncle who raised her, Esther did not stay in her place. She ascended to the house of the worldly king to attend to godly business. Her husband did not know that his new wife was of Jewish descent. He was just captivated by her youth, her beauty, and her grace. The king did not know that God was in the mix preparing Esther for her seat at the table, empowering her to command respect and attention so that at the appointed time, she would save not only herself, but the rest of the Jewish diaspora as well. Judge Ginsburg is, is quoted as saying, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. I mentioned earlier that the king was easily influenced by others, including his prime minister, Haman, a descendant of Amalek, an enemy of the Jewish people. Haman plotted to kill Esther's uncle because he was a Jew and refused to bow down to him. Obviously, Haman was a man who needed adulation and attention, confirmation by others, and thought more of himself than he ought. Esther's uncle learned that Haman was plotting to kill him and all the Jews in exile, and so he entreated her to save her people by presenting herself to the king. Now, although it was not proper protocol for Esther to approach the king without being summoned, she did so, inviting him and Haman to a meal. The Reverend 
Paula Cooper, a PCUSA pastor, mission co-worker in East Central Africa and a sister beloved has often stated, if you don't have a seat at the table, you might just end up on the menu. Esther not only had a seat at the table, she prepared the menu, commanded and controlled the conversation, and appealed to the king's own self-interest by stating, if I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That, my, that is my petition and the lives of my people. That is my request, for we have been sold. I and my people to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. When it was revealed that the king's prime minister was the very person who planned to destroy Esther and her people, he was put to death. And in the words of the late great singer Mahalia Jackson, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two, because the trap you set may just be for you. Paul asked the question of the Romans when he said, so what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? God who did not withhold the only begotten son, but gave him up for us all. Will God not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Just as Jesus flipped the tables in the temple and drove out the exploiters of the people gathered to worship, Jesus flipped the conventional wisdom by declaring that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Jesus flipped the finality of death by being resurrected from the dead by God. And Jesus flipped was what was proper protocol when he prepared a table where everyone is welcome. Everyone has a seat and the heavenly meal is prepared for everyone to eat and drink. Esther took her rightful seat at the king's table and turned the tables on Haman. In the words of Paul, so that it may be clear, this extraordinary power that Esther and we have comes from God and does not come from us. Yes, we are afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, bless God, but we are not destroyed. Beloved people of God, <laughs> People who are treated unjustly, who are deemed less than because of their ethnicity, race, or country of origin, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation, the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the oppressed, overlooked, and underestimated, the young, the old, and everyone in between just want and deserve a seat at the table to be counted, to matter, to have voice, and to be recognized. And by the way, when you find yourself at the table with women, people of color, or people of different orientations, do not treat us as the king treated Vashti. We are not there simply as beautiful faces for the optics or to check an inclusion box. Do not patronize, minimize, or ignore our intelligence, our preparation, experience, or our authority. Our lives have worth. Our words have power. Our place in society has meaning. We are there for such a time as this. And I, we can only be there because our hope is in Jesus Christ, who came that we all might have life and life more abundantly. So beloved siblings of God, we are here to stay. And we are going to take our rightful seat at the table and be heard. Amen.